command home screen. So I'm gonna just quickly kind of walk through the process of using DocuSign from within command and then some of the best practices within um, in command. So I created an opportunity. So I'll come over here to opportunities. For me, I find the easiest way is just to click on all opportunities and then command will show me all the opportunities that I've created in a list. Now I created this test opportunity this morning. Uh, it's a listing. And then I'll click on documents and you can see here where it says start a transaction. That means I have not affiliated DocuSign yet with this opportunity. So to create the room in DocuSign, I have to start a transaction from within command. You do have access to DocuSign from DocuSign.com, but if you start a room there, you will never be able to connect that room to command and you'll lose the functionality of being able to automatically add those documents to your opportunity. So I always recommend that you start any transaction from command. That way you don't have to worry about it. So to do that, click on start a transaction. If you also have dot loop connected to command, it'll give you the option of selecting DocuSign or dot loop. Always select DocuSign. I would even recommend that you go ahead and remove dot loop from command so that way there's not even a question moving forward that everything will always be DocuSign. If you've started a transaction with if you started a transaction in dot loop, you are unable to change from dot loop to DocuSign halfway through. So if you were starting a brand new listing or you have a buyer that's just going under contract and you just started it last week in dot loop, starting next Friday, you will have to manually upload each one of those documents to your opportunity for compliance. So I'm gonna click on start a transaction and this will take me directly into the new room in DocuSign. Now I signed into DocuSign earlier this morning, so it automatically logged me in. But if you get to the screen where it asks for your login email and your password, that is normal. It'll still create the room for you. And you can see the room name here is 1234 Main Street Northeast, Tony Stark dash listing. So this is the name of the opportunity that I created in command. If this is your first time working in DocuSign, you have to uh, validate your NRDS number so that way you have access to the GAR forms. Since the GAR forms are copywritten, you have to confirm that you've paid your association fees to the Atlanta Board of Realtors to use those forms. There are two ways that you can confirm your NRDS number. The easiest way is when you're in a DocuSign room, right here where it says add, you'd click add and then select DocuSign forms. Now for me, since I've confirmed my NRDS number, I have the ability to select documents, but if you have not yet confirmed your NRDS number, you'll have two images here, one of the Realtor logo and then one of like a Northwest MLS. You'll select the Realtor logo, and then I'll take you to another screen that'll ask you to input your NRDS number. More than likely, you don't know your NRDS number because <laughs> I don't think I've met an agent that knows it, but there is a link on the bottom of that window that says, look up NRDS number. If you click on that link, it'll open a new browser window where you can put in your license number, your email address, your last name, a couple pieces of information, and it will show you your NRDS number. You do need to copy that number and then come back into DocuSign and then on that screen, paste that number in there and then click validate. And then you also have to select the Georgia Association of Realtors from a very long drop down list. GAR is towards the bottom and they are not in alphabetical order, I don't know why. So you do have to scroll all the way to the bottom, select GAR and then click validate and then it will it'll show that you have um, 
validated your NRDS number and you were good to use the Georgia Association of Realtor documents in DocuSign. The other way to confirm and double check your NRDS number is in, if you click on your photo or in the circle in the top right hand corner, and then click on preferences. And then on the left hand side, come over here to where it says integrations, and then scroll down just a bit. And here you'll be able to confirm your NRDS number. And if you haven't uh, put in your NRDS number, you are able to, um, so it has the link there that you can look up your NRDS number and confirm you're a member of the Georgia Association of Realtors as well. One thing I do want to comment on the NRDS ID number, your name in DocuSign has to match the same name that is on file with the Atlanta, Real, Atlanta, Atlanta Realtor Association, Georgia Association of Realtors, and the National Association of Realtors. Because if, it is, if the names do not match, it won't validate. So if you have a middle initial in one name versus the other, or let's say uh, one has a maiden name versus a married name, you need to make sure that they match. My recommendation is that you use um, the name that you want, that you work, sorry, Use my recommendation is that in DocuSign, use the name that you use for business purposes. So that way, as you're signing documents and you're sending emails to your clients, they know, okay, this is Nicholas Core, not Nicholas Core Smith, and it's not confusing to them. Um, if the names don't match, reach out to the Atlanta Realtor Association. They'll be able to update your name pretty quickly. I've talked to a few agents and admins that have had to do that. Um, they said it takes about an hour to update in their system and then probably another two or three hours for NAR to update. And then you can just revalidate re your number, uh, your NRDS number here. So that is um, very important that you do that. Otherwise you can't use the GAR forms. Now within the room, so I'm gonna go back into the room that I just created. Is going to take me to the details tab. You must add your, your client's contact information in the details tab correctly. This is what is going to allow them to sign and fill in documents correctly. So um, for me, this is, I just set up a listing. So I, you know, need to come in here and edit all this information. So to do so, I'm going to click edit and then come over here to the left hand side and add in the address. Uh, this is Northeast. Let's do Atlanta, Fulton, and just fill in as much of the information as possible. Property type, this would be residential detached. Your bill will just select 2003. And no special circumstances. So fill in as much of the information as you can over here on the left hand side. Original listing amount, let's do 515, 123. And then 515, 123. So this is important information over here on the left. Now, the really, really important information is gonna be on the right-hand side, and that's gonna be our client contact information. So if you are representing the seller, which for this example, I created a listing, DocuSign will pull in most of that contact information directly out of command. But you do need to go through and double check that information, and if there's anything missing, you need to go through and add it in here. So I have the name for my test, which is Tony Stark, a cell phone number that I had added into command and the email address here. Perfect. I don't need to add in the rest of the address information here. You can if you want to, um, but this, this will be the address um, that they would receive notification or of any you know, contracts and business dealings. If you have seller two, 
fill in that information here. One thing to keep in mind, if you are working with two sellers, when they go to fill in the seller's property disclosure, disclosure or the community association disclosure, seller one is going to be the one that fills that in. So when you are talking with your clients, confirm with them which one is gonna complete those forms so you can set them up as seller one. Otherwise, they won't have access to fill in those forms as seller two. So scrolling down past seller two, which I don't have a seller two, then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna be listing agent, my name, phone number, email address, and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the address for our office. Country, United States, state, select Georgia, and then 30342. And then there is not, I don't have a co-agent on this, so I don't need to fill in listing agent two. Now, you have to keep scrolling. So if you're representing the buyer, it is pretty far down on this page. I don't know why it is set up this way, but this is how it is. So if you are representing the buyer, just make sure you continue to scroll down and scroll down and fill in buyer one, buyer two, and then your buyer agent information. I wanna point that out because more often than not, the issues that you have with signatures and permission to fill in documents will be directly related to you adding in your client information in the details tab. I have a question. Yes. We're filling in a listing agreement, so what do you mean if you represent the buyer? So, yes, for this example, I'm, I'm talking to the seller um, from a listing, but if you are representing the buyer in a buyer side transaction, it's still going to be all the way down there, and even though you wouldn't have gone into the listing part. Yeah, it's going to be the buyer's in contact information input is going to be all the way at the bottom of the page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So today I just set up a listing as an example, but just wanted to clarify. So that way people aren't like, oh, I don't know where the buyer's information is. It's all the way at the bottom. But got it. Good question. Thank you, Alita. So once you've gone through, you've added all your information. Click save in the bottom right hand corner. Perfect. So now we can move into the document section. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time with documents here, but I do want to quickly show you the seller's property disclosure. And then I also want to do an amendment since those are going to be probably the two documents that create the most questions. So to add those documents, select add up here in the top right hand corner and then select DocuSign forms. You can leave it on the DocuSign forms library and then select library and then we'll select Georgia Association of Realtors. I don't know why the greater Alabama MLS is in there. Ignore it. And then we'll select um, the list of all the GAR forms available to us will pop up. So I'm just going to type in sellers Property disclosure, exhibit, here we go, F301. I recommend that you start to learn the form numbers. It'll make it so much easier for you when you go to search uh, for forms. And then I'm also just gonna add an amendment. Amendment to the agreement, here we go. So to make sure that we're selecting the right one. Perfect. So I'm gonna add those. So now the, the page will re refresh and I'll see that I have blank forms here. You can tell that it's a form because the icon right here in the bottom right hand corner of the, of the form shows blue form. And that's important because that'll be different than if you have a PDF or you have a signed document. A form in DocuSign is editable at all times. So let's say for seller's property disclosure, I want to open this up because I want to add some of the information. So if you want to edit any form, you just click on it and it'll open up in this window and you'll see that it'll start to add 
uh, in the information that I put in the uh, details tab. So the offer date, I'll leave that blank, property address, Atlanta. But now you'll see here, as I click through here, I don't have access to any of these fields. I can't make any of these changes. And this is correct because these fields are mapped for seller one to fill in. So just want to double check and make sure everything is good to go. So just scroll down, everything's good to go. Make sure I'm not missing any information. There you can see I have my client's name, Tony Stark. And then I'll just hit save and close. All right. And then also over here, I just want to show you um, how you'd work in an amendment. And it's going to be the same process for every document. Once you add it to a room, you can um, you can just click on it and start editing it. So I'm going to update this amendment one. Today's date is 5-28-2020. Agreement between buyer one and buyer two. Uh, showing how to write an amendment as an example. Perfect. So I'm just putting in my text there. You can see just really simple. Another example, how easy it is to type in here. One thing I love about DocuSign versus .loop is that you can't delete these text boxes. So many times in .loop, I would have to um, delete something and end up deleting the whole box and it would just become a pain in the butt. You don't have to worry about that in DocuSign. So scrolling down here, you can see it added my listing brokerage firm. So Keller Williams Realty First Atlanta. And then I need to add, I am a member of the Atlanta board. And then that is all the information that I want to add. So I'll just click save and close. So that is saving that. And then now we're gonna send that out for signature because I wanna show you uh, what the seller, uh, what the message is like for them and what the process is like for them to quickly fill in the seller's property disclosure. Uh, and then I'll show you how we add multiple amendments. So to send these uh, documents, we have to create an envelope and there's two ways to do that. You can roll over the document and select the document in the top left-hand corner and then you can select the DocuSign button from the toolbar that will appear, and that will take you directly into envelopes, or you can go to envelopes, click on new, uh, and then this will take you right in here, and it'll be the same process, and we'll just walk through this very quickly. Uh, please DocuSign, uh, SPD, and amendment one. Um, I recommend that you, name all of your envelopes, the documents that you're working in, you will be sending multiple envelopes and you'll probably have to do maybe a couple of different purchase and sale agreements or camera offer forms. So make sure that you label the, or name the envelope, something that you're able to keep track of. So we wanna add in our documents from our room. So we will select room documents here. And I'm gonna select the agree amendment to agreement as well as the seller's property disclosure. And now we're gonna to come to add recipients to the envelope. And this I wanna point out is really important to make sure that all of the fields are mapped correctly. When you add a recipient, you have to select pre-tagged roles. If you do not select pre-tagged roles and you just select room participants, your seller will not be mapped to the fields that they need, they need to fill in on the seller's property disclosure. So select pre-tagged roles. And then a window will pop up and we have seller one and we'll come over here and I will select Tony Stark, which is my seller one for today's example. And then the listing agent, I will select myself. The documents here in the middle, this just shows all the different field, all the documents that have fields associated with it for, um, for these uh, clients. Don't worry too much about this. Uh, just make sure that your seller and your and you have seller one and your listing agreement or listing agent set up properly. So uh, yeah, quick yes. question. So if I did have two sellers, I would 
click seller one and seller two, it would go to seller one first, who's going to fill it out. And then after he signs it, it would go to seller two. That is correct. Yeah. So if you have two sellers, you would select seller two and then their name would be here. Just for time's sake today, I didn't add seller two. Um, but yes, that is 100% correct. You would, Great. Thank you. Yeah. So now that we've selected our clients and myself, hit add recipients. And then it's going to add them here. So you can see DocuSign will automatically set so everyone will be able to sign at the same time by this box over here. It says one, one. To Alita's point, which you just asked, is we want to make sure that we send this to seller one first to fill in. So I'm going to update myself to be number two. So that way, Tony Stark will receive the documents first. He will be able to fill in the information on the seller's property disclosure, and then it will come to me, and then I will be able to sign, confirming that all that information is in there correctly. Then down at the bottom, we have a quick email message. Just recommend, please DocuSign, SPD, and amendment. Please sign. Um, I recommend just writing a quick email so they know that it's from you just to verify. Probably a few more words and please sign, um, but keep it pretty short. Now we'll click on next and this will take us into the envelope. And this is where we will double check to make sure that all the fields are mapped correctly for the seller's property disclosure and all the signatures are included properly. So one of the great things about DocuSign is that they put these little tabs on um, the forms to let us know exactly where a signature field is, is included. So I know here for the amendment to agreement, if I scroll down here, it says seller's signature one, or this will be uh, seller one, date signed. I'm just gonna move those quickly so they're on the right line. Uh, and then here, I click up here in the top right hand corner and I can select myself and it's everything's blue. So I know this field right here is for me as the listing agent. And then one thing I want to remember, remind you all is every time that you are working with the GAR form to add your name to the bottom of this page here that says that you have permission to use the GAR form. Michael New and I are working with DocuSign to get this field input so it'll automatically add your name there. But for the time being, um, please add in your name here. And then what we can do is since I'm gonna sign second, I can go ahead and I can set um, the acceptance dates. So, well, I guess I don't need to do that yet. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. Um, now we wanna check the seller's property disclosure. So I'm gonna select Tony. And you can see how all of these fields here are yellow. All of the uh, radio buttons are yellow. And if I click on one, you can see it is mapped to Tony, but the required field here is not checked. It's important to note that, that these fields on the disclosure are not required. So when Tony receives this document or your seller receives the document, it won't make them stop and fill it in. You're gonna have to let your, your clients know, hey, when you get your DocuSign form and you click start, it's gonna jump you to the signature field but you need to scroll back up and fill in the information for all of those fields. So just scrolling through, we can double check everything is yellow. I need to add my name to the bottom of page one. So I'm just gonna add, select myself and add my name there. And then just scroll through really quickly to make sure everything's good to go, which we should be fine. Uh, Double check, all right, our seller's name, date signed, perfect, good to go. You can also select recipient preview if you wanna see what it's going to look like for your client. So I can select Tony. And then up here, it'll show me what it looks like on a computer, on a tablet and an iPhone, or a phone rather. You can click start, sign, and then you see when I hit sign, it jumps me right to the very end of the seller's property disclosure, that's what's going to happen to your seller. So they'll have to scroll back up and fill in the information. So I'll just hit next. 
All right, so that's the, the recipient preview. So now I'm gonna click send. So I will quickly change the um, sharing to my email address or to my email so I can show you what that looks like. Let me come over here, share screen. Google Chrome. Here we go. So now you can see this is the email that I just set up um, for tech training. So please docu DocuSign SPD and amendment. So I click on that. Here's my picture, email, please sign. I click on review documents. And this is what, it, this is what your client will see. We'll just hit allow. Agree to use electronic records and signatures. Click continue. So I'll click start. It's gonna have me sign. It'll have your clients confirm their signature. They can draw it or upload one. It doesn't matter. Just click adopt and sign. Now you see how it jumped me all the way to the bottom here. This is where you have to remind your client to scroll up through the seller's property disclosure. Now, if it if it makes more sense, you can send the seller's property disclosure as its own document. So then you don't have to worry um, about it just kind of quickly jumping through. Let me put my charger in here. So here you can see now your seller has access to fill in this information. So you just type in 2000, is a property vacant? No. Has a property been leased? No. Boom. And then you can well, just- He doesn't have to tab through. He could just move his cursor to where he needs to, to uh, fill in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you can just kind of go through here. Uh, your seller can just click through and just write in information, you know, fill in all of the information as needed. And you can see here, I added my name to the copyright field. So that shows up. So I'm not, I just going to click some of these. I'm not going to go through the whole document just for the sake of time. All right. Perfect. So I'll click next and that'll take me to the signature field on the bottom and I'll click sign. And then I will click finish. And just have them say, no thanks. They don't need to create a DocuSign account. So what I will do now is I'm going to stop sharing this window and I'm going to share my Google Chrome. Where is it? There we go. So you should all be able to see that I've now clicked back into DocuSign. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new browser and go to Gmail and open up my work email. And you can see now, here's my turn to sign, please DocuSign SPD and amendment. And I'll click review documents. So I'll click continue and then click start. And I can see here, Tony signed. Here's the date and time, and I'll click my signature there. And then I don't have a signature on the seller's property disclosure because there isn't a place for me, but I can just scroll through and I can see here is the information that Tony filled in on the seller's property disclosure. So that's the importance of having uh, your client sign first and then you sign second and then click finish. And this will save it as signed documents in my DocuSign. Just give it a second. All right, done signing, continue. So I'm gonna come back over here into the DocuSign room and I'm gonna select on documents. Let me refresh. Oh, why isn't it showing as 
It should be signed, it needs to sign. Okay, why is it not? All right, so now I just got an email showing that I completed it. Let me come back over here. There we go, perfect. Sorry, I just took a minute for it to show. So you can see now, here I have a PDF, and this is a certification of signatures, just to confirm that everyone signed correctly and when they did sign. Here is my signed amendment one. See the signature, signature. You can see the green check mark and it says signed. And then here's my signed seller's property disclosure. There's all the information that the seller filled in. You can see all the check mark, check boxes and his signature at the bottom. Perfect. So now we have our signed amendment one, but let's say you need to work on amendment two. So your first instinct would be, oh, I need to add another amendment. So to do that, I would come over here. I'd click add DocuSign forms. Let's give it a second. Georgia Association of Realtors and I'll type in amendment. And I would select, I would want to select amendment to agreement F701, but you see it's already checked. The way DocuSign works is that the, the document form is just kind of a blank form for you to fill in. So it, you can only add it one time to a room. So I already have that amendment to agreement in the room, so it won't let me add it again. So if I want to create my amendment number two, what I have to do is I have to click on the amendment to agreement form, the blue form. So I, so I click on it. And it'll open up and it'll be editable. And here's where I have to go through and start making those edits to it. So I'd up, you know, update the date, uh, creating amendment two, more info. So if you have multiple amendments, you're still going to use the same amendment form. You just have to update the information appropriately. All that information stays the same and hit save and close. So Nick. Yes. So even though we're using the same form to, uh, you know, do our amendments, where are the saved versions of like the earlier amendments? So here you can see here's amendment to agreement. Here's our signed amendment one. Okay, so once it's signed, it saves it, and then you have to go back in the unsigned version to just update. Yeah. Now you can rename this form. So right here, when you're in this form, there's a document actions. So you could rename it. Um, let me just do, just add one there. So I, I now know that is agreement, amendment to agreement one. And it is has a green check box mocked the green check box, and I can no longer edit this document. I don't have any permissions to edit it. So that way you don't have to worry about amendment one getting messed up when you start working on amendment two, because this is a PDF and it has all the signatures. Does that make sense? Of course, it doesn't have the other side signature. Yeah, well, of course, yes. So <laughs> You would have to send this um, to the other side um, for their signature and have them um, fill in the acceptance date information at the bottom. Now, um, let's see, what else did I have? Um, SPD, multiple amendments. So if you want to send this amendment out, so this would be the you would create an envelope and send it out the same way that you just did for the other documents. And then that will save it as another signed amendment. And we would just update the name to amendment to agreement two. So Nick, I'm, I'm a little slow here. So if we wanted to do that, the first step to doing that would be do what? What do we need to do here with that amendment so that we could send it to the other side? Uh, so if we want to send this to the other side, we can select it and then download it it's probably gonna be the easiest thing to do. 
Now, if you wanted to, you could go through, um, I guess you can just click email right here. And then you could email this to buyer's agent at whatever. So if we did it that way, it would not fill in fields for them to sign if we just emailed it, right? Correct. But if we did it the other way, then we would, where we downloaded it, then we would put it, how would we get it back to the place where you put in the field, the email field? Okay, oh, so you want them to be able to fit, to sign everything directly Let's, from? Well, I, well, maybe we wouldn't. We wouldn't be doing that if we're sending it to the other side. So we don't usually have their signature, but let's say it's a customer on the other side. Okay. So what you do, um, let me come over here. So you would, let's say we have our signed amendment to agreement one right here, select it, and then we will click on DocuSign. Okay. This will create an envelope for us. So this is just kind of the other way. Um, let's do um, amendment one. We have our agreement, our amendment to agreement one. Then what we could do here is we could just add um, email address, and we could you know customer name, customer name, and then. Um, customer1 at email.com. I got it, okay. And then, okay. then click on next. And this will put us in the envelope where we have the ability to add the signatures. So you can see here is customer name. And then I would just come here and put, select a signature for customer1 and a date signed. Perfect, thanks so much. Yep. And that is how you would then send that to that customer. All right. Let me save and close. So that was most of the information that I had for best practices. I wanted to leave enough time to kind of answer any of your questions, troubleshoot any issues that you have. What questions do you have or want to see that I did not cover this morning. We have 20 it minutes. Was excellent. Thank you, Nick. That was great. Yeah. You are very welcome. I'm we have 20 minutes and I'm here till 11 o'clock. So by all means, like we have a lot of time to answer questions. Quick question on the the logo in the left hand corner where the the house, house icon is that where you're able to upload a photo of the property? Yeah. So yeah, if you wanted to, you could add an image there. Okay. Great. Thanks. Any other questions? All right, well, I mean, if you guys have all the information, you can't think of anything, then by all means, feel free to, to jump off. I'll stick around for the next 20 minutes um, to answer any questions or anyone that wants to join. Um, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So Nick, this is, we can go ahead and go in, like it's already set up for us to go in to DocuSign. When you say set up for us, what do you mean? Like if I go to DocuSign.com, do I just put in like my Keller Williams email and go from there? No, that is a great question, Brittany. So if you have not yet set up your DocuSign account, the way you're going to do that is when you're in command, come up here next to your name, select this down arrow, come to settings. And then DocuSign should be at the at the top here, and it should be uh, there should be a button that says Connect Account, or Create Account, and then you would fill in your email address. I recommend that you use your KW email, mm -hmm. and then when you fill in your email address and your name, it will then send it an email to that email address, and it will come from Rooms. 
and you will need to then go in there and click authorize and that will say that will allow yeah. command to authorize that account okay and then that will set that up for you got it okay and so once we set that up we'll be good to go you know to go in here and, and use DocuSign going forward that is correct and so once we connect it, everything that we do in DocuSign will automatically load into command? So that is another great question. It will not automatically show up. So let me show you what you have to do. So I'm going to come back to my opportunity. Let me come down here to the one I created for today. Documents. So I have my seller's property disclosure. And I need to add that into my documents tab so I can send it to Lynn and Alita for review. To add that from DocuSign, I click add a file. And then the source of documents, I select DocuSign. And then it will show all the documents that I have in DocuSign. And then I will select the right document, which is going to be the seller's property disclosure exhibit signed. Because you see here, it also has the unsigned version. So just double check and make sure that all the documents you add have signed at the end. So I will click that and then click assign. Hey, Nick. Yes. That specific um, item will, will DocuSign automatically add dash signed once it has been signed or is that something we have to go back and add? It automatically adds the dash signed um, to the end of the name of the document once it's been signed. Okay. And then once you go in to add the files, is it bringing you the files per each room or is it just like all the rooms that you have in there? So then you need to make sure that you're naming your files by the So it will only show you the files for that room that are affiliated with this opportunity. Yeah. So that's why it's very, very, very important that you start your transaction from within command. So that way that room and DocuSign and command are linked. Okay, so start transaction from command and then go to uh, DocuSign. Yeah. Okay. Nick, I had a question about in DocuSign and we were supposed to have a 12 o'clock meeting, but I actually rewatched your one of your training videos and figured out what my assistant was doing. She had created um, a folder and before she had created the room in DocuSign before she, she didn't, um, I guess, do it from command. So I know that you have to generate it in command and I think that, that was an issue um, with the connection. But I did have a question about, you know, I know that FMLS isn't updating the information, which is a huge pain, and it was such a time saver in dot loop. Um, but it also, DocuSign is not updating like our contact information. So I'm having to enter in my um, license number every time, or, you know, my information every single time. Is there any way to save that in our system within DocuSign and not have to keep doing that? Cause it's a time suck. Yeah. So unfortunately at the moment, we do have to continue to add that information in every single time we are working with DocuSign to have them get those fields mapped correctly. It's, it's just something from on DocuSign's DocuSign's DocuSign side that when they set up the forms, they didn't map those fields. So we're working with them. So that way, hopefully in the next month or so you won't have to add that information, but for the time being, you, you do. There is a workaround, and I don't know if it's going to be a huge time saver. Depend, it just kind of depends on your volume. You can create a template, um, and so that way you can have a template already set up with all of your information in it. So you just have to fill in the property address, any special stipulations, and all that. Um, I did a train my training last week on the deep dive. Went into creating the template. But the template wouldn't have the automated fill when you go to do signatures, right? You would have to go ahead and add those. Well, you, you when you set up the template, you would set to have um, 
your signature field auto populated. So then when you created the envelope, you would assign that role. So then when you went into, when you created the envelope, you'd assign those roles. And then when you went into the envelope, it would auto populate um, the signature fields for your clients. Oh, awesome. So then you wouldn't have to do it until new GAR comes out probably end of the year, first of the year next year. Yeah, that is correct. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have one more. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in the beginning of one of your training videos, you mentioned that you don't like sharing your client's information, so you delete their contact, their email address. So I did that at the beginning for one of my contracts, like a draft contract I was writing to get yeah. through this. And um, when I went to go do the signatures, it said email void. So does Correct. that mean I, I, if I add, go back to the actual document itself, like I get out of that envelope and go back to, I'm just going to keep that in there until I send it to the agent and then block it, basically to strike it? Yes. So if you delete any information out of the fields in, in a document, that auto populated it's going to delete it out of the details tab okay. so so when you deleted their email address out of the purchase and sale agreement i'm assuming it automatically deleted that email address out of details so then when you went to create the envelope there wasn't an email address affiliated with that client so don't delete it that's why i recommend when you're in the envelope to put a black box over their contact information Right, but that was later on in the video and I'd already done it. <laughs> um, so I've got another question. Can I go back to the document? Two questions. Can I go back to the document and just add that back in the field and then create another envelope? And will that automatically fix that problem? Yes. Okay. And then also, can we go back? So let's close out a DocuSign, go back to our command. And when we're updating command, let's say initially I created a room for my client because we didn't have an address, but I wanted to, um, you know, prep all the documents and the contracts potentially for them. But when we have the address and all, all of that information, I can update that later in command. Will that automatically update the room information in DocuSign when I do the sync transaction? That I, I don't think it'll update the name um, in DocuSign, but that's fine. It doesn't, the room, the room in DocuSign and the opportunity and command are already connected. So you don't have to worry about the two of them having the same name. So I can change it so that it appears differently to my client when they get sent an email. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once you create the create the room from within command, you're fine to change it. It has a, a room ID number, and that's going to be really the main link between the two. So as long as that doesn't change, you're fine. So you can change the naming convention to anything you want. Okay, cool. Thank you. And those training videos are so helpful. I mean, okay. it really walked you through it. Thank you for doing those. You are very welcome. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you all for joining this morning. I'll put eight minutes back on your calendar. Um, as you guys are working in DocuSign and watching the videos, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions. Email me, call me, text me. Be the best ways to get in contact and let me know how I can help. Thank you.